Hey there, welcome back. Thanks for joining us. My guest in this segment is Justin Hall, and he's the CEO of Iguana Technologies, Inc., trading on the TSX Venture under the symbol EGT. Justin, it has been a while. Welcome back. Great to be here, James. Happy to be with you. Yeah, so let's see. We started covering Iguana Technologies back in 2014. It's been a while. It's been a while, and so we've had a ringside seat over the rather impressive arc of your development. Why don't we start with an update of what's happened in the last 12 months that's really taken you to a new level? Quite a bit, actually, James. Uh, back when you started covering us, we were more going for the power controls inside energy storage systems. Um, and as we went through the sector in the different regions, we saw there was little core competency for people to do that full integration. It's, it's technologically difficult and a core competency that we had in-house. So across that time frame, we've actually migrated the strategy to produce fully integrated uh, and factory assembled storage appliances. So you get uh, the EMS, the power controls, the full integration to the battery, all in one box mm -hmm. coming out of the factory, which is a little bit different in the industry that was primarily driven by an inverter uh, with a, a battery and an EMS. And if you think about uh, an installer perspective, you can either install one box or you can install several boxes. So we paid a lot of attention over the years as to how we could simplify the approach, mm -hmm. uh, maintaining the core values of, of the company uh, and, uh, and have a better product at the, at the end of the day, which is I think where we are now. Sure, one of your key relationships is with uh, LG Chem and you've made some incredible inroads with them where they've actually really embraced your technology and, and start, have started to ship uh, original equipment manufacturer products with your stuff pre-installed? Uh, great relationship. Uh, obviously, as a small Canadian tech company, it was a, a, a critical one for us. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw that battery supply was going to be you know, a deciding factor in the home storage sector, and, and we could see that uh, with the electrical vehicle movement that you really want to have a robust supply chain for that. Uh, we went through uh, long-standing tests with LG. Uh, several of the development team have been to Korea. We worked directly with the team there. Uh, and we were actually the first to integrate their module into a fully integrated system. So great relationship. They're very supportive of us. Uh, they actually look at our product as kind of the large modular LG product. Mm -hmm. They have their own standing product, which is an LG Resu. It's a DC coupled product that goes to 10 kilowatt hours. Our product, which we've done in a modular fashion, goes from 13 kilowatts all the way up to 39. So a lot of support from LG. Uh, we know them well and, and we look forward to continuing that relationship. You bet. The Sales and demand sort of picture over the last three years has improved dramatically as well as adoption of, uh, of storage systems for solar uh, at home levels is really starting to improve globally, isn't it? We're seeing a, a significant tipping point right now. And as I explained it to some of the people that, that I've been talking with, uh, up until this point, you've seen the manufacturers push the product into the market. and. Depending on which market you were in, it was either a self-consumption type market like Europe where you've got a high power price or a grid services type market in the U.S. where it was uh, you know, bound by regulatory constraints and change. But what we're seeing now is a, is a market pull creating somewhat of a, of a vacuum out there for uh, certified energy storage products. Uh, we think we've hit that timing uh, very well. Uh, we've just launched the commercial, uh, small commercial industrial product in March. We launched the fully assembled product uh, for Australia and North America in March. And, and just recently uh, at the InterSolar show in Germany, we launched the uh, European specific product. So all three products are now in the market. They're certified and, and rolling out through distribution mm -hmm. uh, at a time where we see the change from the market from a push manufacturing push to, uh, to a market pull. So, okay. so very good, uh, very good timing. Great, and during our last conversation, we talked about how uh, you know you are competing essentially in many respects with Tesla, and that in many respects you have a superior product which is recognized within the industry. So, what is what are the elements of your product relative to Tesla's Powerwall, for example, that make the Iguana system superior? I would say the, the first thing right now, and something that we focus on the supply chain aspect, and it sounds simple enough, but it's availability. And there's a, a worldwide shortage uh, on the power wall. 
um, and, and the rest of the competitors are focusing on availability. Outside of that, Tesla came out of the gate uh, with a, a very low price point on the product. Uh, most of the other manufacturers did not follow suit on that price point. Um, where we were able to compete directly on that is large system sizes. Large system sizes are what you typically see in Australia and the North American market. And where we get a cost advantage over a power wall is in the power uh, electronics topology. We've got a modular system where you can put one uh, power control system installed and then you can add battery modules to it. So if you wanted to go from, say, a 13 kilowatt hour system to a 26 kilowatt hour system on an Evolve product, which is our, our fully integrated product, you just add the battery modules. Hmm. In Tesla's case, you would have to add a full second power wall. So as system size go up, the fact that you only have to add battery capacity on an Iguana system gives you a cost advantage over the power wall. Yep. And then you look at installation flexibility. Mm -hmm. uh, power wall has certain challenges uh, in, uh, in different regions due to its size, where our modular approach also lets you uh, have a lot more flexibility there. So um, a lot of markets, they will have the same function, but we've got a lot more flexibility we can take a cost advantage and then just the general product availability against the power wall. Mm -hmm. So scalability and availability. That's very well put. Uh, <laughs> absolutely right. Absolutely. I like to rhyme things so yes, I can remember I'll, them. Yes, <laughs> uh, I'll take that one from you. Okay, so what is the uh, what are, what is your sales and picture look like for the next 12 months going out? And what's the sort of gross margin on that? It's it, it's looking very good. And, and we just announced a, a press release last week where our longstanding partner, Mercedes-Benz Energy, uh, we've, we've come out now publicly that they were in fact our German automotive partner. Hmm. They've done extensive testing uh, on our product and, and we've got the endorsement from them. It was uh, a long road to get there, but we were able to uh, execute and, and finish that. What they've also done for us is their sales team worked with us to do the introduction and the conversion of their distribution pipeline. So outside of North America, we are running through distribution. And in the last several weeks, we've added distributors uh, in Europe, uh, Turkey, Middle East, Australia, and, and it's due to that relationship and having that endorsement with, uh, with Mercedes-Benz. And you know, from the company perspective, we identified a couple of years ago who we thought would be the leadership uh, groups at this point in the market. And we had identified Powerwall, uh, as we mentioned, but we also identified LG Chem and Mercedes-Benz Energy as the top tier. And our uh, objective at that time was to work with one or multiple players that we considered top tier. Uh, today, I'm happy to say that we do have the, uh, the backing of LG, and, and now we have the formal endorsement of Mercedes-Benz. So hmm. we, we identified two of the three and, and actually have done uh, very well with two of them. So sure. the, the distribution rollout is going well. Uh, the revenues will scale drastically in, in the fourth quarter. Uh, and the margins that we're looking at are for our industry uh, very healthy and, and they're right now sitting in the uh, in the mid 20 percent range. So mm -hmm. uh, margins look good. Uh, the rollout looks good. And, and we certainly have the two uh, uh, big partners backing the uh, product. Sure. Um, just a sort of tangential question. It strikes me as potentially opportunistic for LG Chem to acquire you outright and if they're already if you're already embedding their modules in your systems at what point does it make more sense for Iguana Tech to be an LG Chem subsidiary we we've kick that around. Uh, obviously, the battery guys uh, are more focused on the batteries, and, and I think it's uh, important to understand that the electric vehicle market does take a lot more of the batteries. Mm -hmm. um, we had approached uh, LG at one point to look at uh, integrating a full system with them. They're not really structured uh, to manage that type of a global business. Okay. So I, I don't see them as a, as a potential acquirer. I think what you'll see uh, with the, the battery players is they're going to continue to advance the battery technology uh, and, and focus mainly on the batteries and, and primarily on the EV space, which is why it's critical to have your supply chain locked down on the residential uh, stationary piece so that you always have access to the batteries. But I don't see them as a, as a candidate for, uh, okay. for Iguana. What about Iguana acquiring LG Chem? Yeah, we're, uh, yeah, agreed. Uh, we'll, that makes we'll, more sense We'll talk me. that one through with the shareholders and and see what we get. Right. Okay, so finally, uh, what does the outlook for 2018 look like? Where are the catalysts in terms of value for the shareholders? 
We, uh, we were rebounding and rebuilding I, in 2016, 2017. I think our shareholders, which, you know, good group of shareholders that have been with us a long time understood that. Um, we've already increased our revenue in 2018 from 700,000 uh, to about 2.6 million. Uh, we expect that to uh, double within the, uh, the rest of the fiscal year. Hmm. Uh, and then we should continue to see that growth as the products roll out in the fourth calendar quarter hmm. and into 2019. Wow. Um, yeah, it's, uh, the help from our, our two partners has been tremendous. Yeah. Uh, and now we have products selling uh, and rolling out right across our target jurisdictions, which were uh, Australia, Europe, and, uh, and of course, North America. Wow, great, Justin. Let's uh, leave it there for now. We'll come back to you in a quarter's time and catch up with you and see how you're doing. Thanks very much for your time today. Thanks, James. I look forward to it. Take care.